I would respond honestly that I don't know, um, but that has to be followed with a call to action. So let's find out. Uh, as an example, you know, when uh, we've done this model with, with coding, one of the first things that we cover is how to Google and what Stack Overflow is, so that how you can look at questions that other people have asked. And uh, some of the best um, uh, learning moments that I've seen in this sort of model have come from people who are, in fact, experts at the topic and who've been stumped by questions. So I, I think, again, just showing that it's okay not to know everything and that even experts get tripped up sometimes, um, and that all you have to do is just uh, be able to frame a question and be, uh, be able to look out. Somebody's probably had that question before, so you'll be able to find an answer. So one example I remember is for my second um, learning circle, where it was, was the topic was HTML slash CSS, or how to build content for a website. Um, I didn't know anything about HTML or CSS, um, so I felt a little bit intimidated going into that course, but uh, thankfully there was a person there who did have some background in website, website content d design, and so um, they were able to assist all the other people, which was great, because like I learned things and the other people learned things, and I thought that was a great um, solution to, I guess, the problem. So don't feel like you have to be an expert at something just to, just to facilitate a learning circle. I think just like the learners, you have to be really self-motivated. You have to want to put in the, the time that it takes to um, really learn something. Um, you have to be willing to interact with the material maybe more than just that few hours a week or um, and really communicate if you have questions or um, if you struggled with a part of the lesson, like opening up the dialogue and be, being a person who can open up the dialogue, like being really open and communicative is really important.